Hexstar has a new 4-bay charger on the market, the VC4S. This is a do-it-all charger with the ability to charge a wide variety of battery chemistries and sizes. The Hexstar VC4S has a quick charge 3.0 input that allows for a maximum of 3 amp charging on one bay and the ability to do capacity testing, resistance testing, wall charging, and store in a storage mode. Thanks to Xstar for sending this to me to take a look at. Hey guys, I'm really trying to build my Facebook group up, so if you haven't joined that, I'd appreciate it if you do. A link will be in the description below. So here is the packaging that the VC4S comes in. It's similar to Xstar's other boxes. White box here, you've got a picture of the charger on the front, different languages of uh, kind, of, kind of some specs. On the back in very small print are some specifications of the charger and uh, just some basic facts about it. Nice retail box. Accessories this comes with are pretty basic. You obviously get the charger itself. Then you get a uh, cable here, which is a nice high quality cable, it is branded X-Star um, and it is QC3 compatible. And then you get this uh, kind of leathery bag to put everything in and keep the dust off as well as a manual here. So just a little bit of comparison. I've got the original VC4 here and that's kind of been my main charger. They're very similar in design physically. You can see the screens are basically the same size. The layout is the same. Uh, ribbing is the same. Same on the back pretty much. They are a little bit different up top here with you can see the old VC4 having a barrel connector and the new uh, VC4S having that quick charge 3.0 connector. So this is a well-built charger. It's solid in the hand. There's no creaking or cracking. The plastic is molded well. There's no uh, issues there. On the top, as I mentioned before, it's got that USB, micro USB input for a quick charge 3.0. Labeled as such, no outputs. On the bottom, you've got venting on the sides as well. Then the back here, you've got a placard that is just ever so finely molded in place there. All the different chemistries and battery sizes, inputs and outputs, all the information you need to know, as well as your serial number placard. If I take a few of these batteries out here, you can see these have four places for batteries. These are all spring-loaded, and they're nice and smooth. Some of the other chargers I've tested over time haven't been this smooth, so that's kind of nice. You've got two buttons here as well. And you can put... Uh, most common size batteries will fit here. So I've got a 21700 here. This is an unprotected cell, and that's as basically as long as you can go here. It really doesn't move any more than that. The two outside slots are designed for larger cells. You can um, put two big cells beside each other, but then it really doesn't leave room for a smaller cell. Two 18650s are really designed to fit in the middle here, no problem. And uh, the outside are two larger cells. The screen here, as you can see, is 75 millimeters by 32 millimeters with a white and blue text on a black background. It's pretty clear and reasonably bright with a backlight that uh, does dim after a minute or so. And I'll try and keep pressing that here so it stays alive. You can see there it is lit up. To just explain the display here, I've got one cell charging right now. You've got the voltage on the outside, three quarters, and you've got the charging speed down here in the bottom corner. You've got capacity and battery chemistry there. It will say done when it's fully charged or full, and that's kind of nice. Then along the top here, you've got the different modes you're in. So that below the screen here, there are two buttons here. On the left, between slot one and two, you've got the display button. And this changes what the display is showing during modes. If you press it, default is capacity, which is charging. You press again, it shows your current. And then you press it again and you get the resistance. So this battery that I'm charging right now has a resistance of 15 milliamps. On the button to the right, between slot three and four here, you have the mode button. And uh, it goes between grading and storage. And I'll go more into those here in a minute. I did take this charger apart and I'll put a few pictures up here what I found inside. I didn't see anything that concerned me. But if you see something worth mentioning, please make sure you comment about it below. So as I mentioned, the X-Star VC4S is capable of recharging lithium ion, IMR, INR, and ICR batteries, as well as nickel metal hydride. And let me load up a few of those. So these are the most common cells found today in your flashlights, vape pens, and other electronics. 
and let me re run through some of the details of them. So this charger does have zero volt activation and reverse polarity protection. If I flip this uh, 26650 around here, we can see what reverse polarity looks like. It immediately tells error and won't charge. I measured lithium ion termination voltage at 4.161 volts and nickel metal hydride termination at 1.422 volts. So both went in pretty good spec. So speed is not something you can manually configure on this charger with a button, but there are some things you can do to influence speed. So first off, this charger is capable of charging up to three amps on one bay. So to do that, first I need to be plugged into a quick charge 3.0 power source. And on today I'm using my XSTAR EC EU4 that I've reviewed previously. The second thing you need to do to use that full speed charging is to have only one battery plugged in and it needs to be large enough and the battery needs to test with a low enough uh, resistance. So this uh, 21700 that I'm using does. So as you can see there, it's charging at a full three amps. And while I've got not many batteries in here, let's uh, talk about one of the negatives here. This seems to want to charge a one nickel metal hydride at that three amps as well, which for me, that's too fast. But there are things you can do to reduce that. So as I put in more batteries, the charger will slow down. So I've got two batteries plugged in here and it says they're both charging at two amps. I can plug in a third and we bump down to one amp. And if I plug in the fourth, we can see here, we'll just make sure it gets going. It's also charging at one amp. I did observe for in loops charging all at one amp a piece when they're about half full. And the charger does have different speeds for different bays, uh, half an amp, one, two, and three amps. While quick charge 3.0 is not required, I'd strongly recommend it with this charger so you can take advantage of the speed that it offers. If you have a quick charge 2.0 charger, you can only expect about two amps maximum. The XSTAR VC4 also has the ability to test capacity of cells and that's the grading mode here that you see. And what that does is it fully charges the cells, then fully discharges them to a voltage they don't publish and I wasn't able to really determine, and then charges them back up, all while counting the amount of power that went in and out of the cell and gives you a number. So I compared it to my ISD TC4 charger, which also has a capacity test, and on the C4, I used a Samsung 30Q battery and it tested at 2,788 milliamp hours. And uh, then the VC4 tested at 2,600, 2,763 milliamp hours, so very close. I did the same test with an in loop and uh, got 1,906 milliamp hours versus 2,109 milliamp hours. So a bit more difference there um, in the testing between the two different chargers. You also have the ability to test storage mode here. And what this does is lithium ion batteries, ideally if you're gonna charge them and store them for a long time, they shouldn't be at 100%. They should be at somewhere around that 60 to 80% mark. So what this charger does is it brings your batteries in line to that ideal perfect voltage. So you can see here it says it's charging this 21700 because it's too low. It's discharging this nickel metal hydride because it's too high as is this 18650 and 26650. So it's just uh, evening them all out to the ideal perfect voltage. And I uh, tested this again with my um, Samsung 30Q battery and it brought the uh, lithium ion battery down to 3.67 volts. And you can do this on all four cells at one time. You can also do this on nickel metal hydride batteries, but there isn't as much reason to do this. So lastly, You've also got the ability to test resistance of your cells. That's kind of a uh, nice thing to do. Gives you a little bit more information about what's going on. You can see uh, that 21700, it's my newest battery here of the bunch, and it's the lowest resistance. So the pros are, it's nice to see chargers start to use Quick Charge 3 for power input. I like that the additional features here allow you to do uh, capacity tests, storage, um, as well as measure cells resistance. I like that you've got a wide variety of battery support sizes and battery chemistries, and it's faster than previous versions. And lastly, this is an affordable charger. 
Um, they run about $20 or so at time of filming. The cons for me are, I'd like to see a little bit more information about the incoming power source, whether it is QC3, QC2, just two amp, what's going on there. Maybe uh, if they wanted to get really crazy amperage and voltage of the input and source. Um, this is using micro USB for power connection versus USB-C. Again, I'm just going to harp on everything that's using micro USB these days. USB-C should be the connector of choice. It's a little bit too fast for my taste for charging one nickel metal hydride battery at 3 amps. Although it's easy enough to uh, reduce that if you put in any other battery. And uh, there's no manual way to control charging speed. The charger is generally pretty conservative, so the only place I found that was a problem was those little bit larger nickel metal hydride batteries. So my conclusion is the X-Star VC4S is a nice affordable upgrade over the VC4 that I originally have. The original VC4 was my main charger for a long time because it was dead simple. I liked the display and how reliable it was. But as time went on, it just was a bit slow, especially when charging uh, four cells at once. The VC4S improves these issues by adding QC3, allowing uh, higher voltages and faster charging. By modern standards, it still isn't a super fast charger, but I typically don't like to charge batteries that fast, and uh, it's actually usually better to charge them slower. I like the added features of testing capacity and measure resistance during my charging cycles. These are things I'll use to, as I test batteries down the road. I'm a little disappointed to see USB-C not make a difference here and give this thing a real power boost, but maybe that will be coming in a future model. Hint, hint make sure you're subscribed. Overall, this is a good charger and one I'll keep using with my cells to keep them full. I recommend it as long as you make sure you have a quick charge 3.0 um, power source. As always, thanks guys for watching this video. You can help me out by liking this video, making sure you're subscribed to the channel, and making sure you join the Facebook page and any of my other social media platforms. I'll have a link in the description where you can pick this up if you'd like, so make sure you give it a click. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.